I mean, I have sons and fathers and sons in here. You know, now they're inmates. You know, I have a, I have a grandfather and a, and a grandson in here now in the jail. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it was crazy. And for me to say I know, you know, all 1,750 inmates are here today, I can't say I know them all. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of them. You know, they all know me. I mean, they all know who I am. Because I'm the boss, you know, and that's yeah. who they want something, they have to answer me. So it's kind of where they, they, all, they all know me. Um, originally I started, I wanted to uh, become a state trooper, a police officer. Um, didn't have a lot of money for college, so I went back to, I went to work at the jail and, um, you know, started going through college a little bit and found out, you know what, maybe the police work wasn't for me. This is, I really enjoyed this work. I really enjoyed the, uh, the officers I worked with, the people I worked with, and, you know, and I stayed here. Um, the best aspects are the people I work with, the officers. Uh, they're pretty real. I mean, there's no real games they play here with that. You have to be, you know, you're like a family here in the jail. And people say, oh, but it's the truth. We really are. Um, we have to be there for each other uh, with the small numbers that we have, the large number the inmates have. Um, the worst thing, probably the work in the, some of the hours you have to work, uh, dealing with the nonsense from the, from the, from the public, and public and from the inmates. Um, that's probably the worst aspect of it, but like I said, the people are, are great here that work here, really are. Is it stressful? Yeah. You know, I was pretty lucky. I mean, people don't think I, I was lucky. I was very lucky. I, I, I got to work for a lot of night shift. But was it hard to be, you know, I had to come in to work Christmas Eve, I had to come to work New Year's Eve, those kind of things are hard. But, you know, I'm home, I, I guess I work a night shift. I was home Christmas morning. You know, I was home, you know, Thanksgiving Day. I, I was home those days. I had to go to work that night. But I was home at least some part of the day to spend some time. But is it hard? Yeah, it's a very stressful job. Has it put a strain on my relationship with my family? Certainly, especially with my wife, you know. In the county prison, we get everybody. Uh, we'll get people in for retail theft. We'll get people in for, right now, it's Saturday morning, so we have DUIs here. Yes, last night, probably on Friday, we probably got 65 to 70 DUI guys come in for the weekend, do their weekend sentence. So we'll have them here, be down in like in the work release area or the, one of the lower security wings. Um, anywhere up to, you know, guy with a murder charge. And right now we probably have 40 murderers in a jail. Um, um, I think we have one female murderer in a jail and we're being charged with murder. And the rest of it will be all the males that we have charged with murder. And anywhere in between. So retail theft, burglaries, drug charges, probably most of them go back to a drug charge somewhere along the line. A lot of probation violations, a lot of parole violators here. Um, you know, most of our inmates aren't sentenced inmates. They're, most of them are, are awaiting to, their court dates. We're waiting to finish up their court sentences, their court times, more than anything else. I can tell you 10,000 of those encounters I have. And not all of them are good. I've, been, I've had poop thrown on me. I've had urine thrown on me. I've been on, spit, kicked, bit, punched. Anything you could possibly imagine I've probably had. Uh, done here to me. Um, so, you know, they're not, the, they're not the greatest parts of the job. They're the kind of things I kind of try to forget sometimes, but Fights, we probably have two fights a day in the jail. You know, the guys are fighting over, and they'll fight pretty much over everything. About jail, jail is about power. Jail is not about, oh, he wants to eat your food, or he wants, it's about power. Who's going to be strong, who's going to be weak? And that's what it's about. Who can, you know, the powerful guys are going to be on top, and the other guys are going to do the, do what they want them to do. That's kind of where where, they, where we fall out in jail. So that's the way the jail. We talk about that divide and conquer. A lot of that is for them also. You know, we try to put. You know, we got a guy who's being uh, picked on. We we move him out of that unit and put him somewhere else. We got a guy who's trying to be like the power guy. We can take him somewhere else and put him in the other. We have 54 different housing units here in the jail. I could put one guy over here, one guy over here, and they'll never see each other the entire time they're here. So there's, it gives us a lot of leeway with that kind of stuff. The design of our jail. Really, that I haven't had a staff member assaulted by a weapon here in the jail, uh, but you know they certainly they, again, and they don't even assault that many inmates with weapons. They fight all the time, but they don't certainly usually knives and stuff. Cutting is not a big issue for us here in the jail. Again, that divide and conquer—they can't hide in a large crowd.
but what they do is they have these and they threaten more so than any of the stuff we see also is um, like this kind of stuff, you know, really, really a heavy duty metal. It takes a long time to, you know, get that into a shape, but, you know, even just getting whacked with that is going to hurt, let alone getting stabbed with it. The big problem, more so than probably anything else right now, is like tattoo needles. Tattooing guys, you know, tattooing craze, we see a lot of people with tattoos, they try to do that here. Well, you know, that kind of stuff isn't easy to come by, so what they're going to do is they'll do a tattoo on everybody in the place with the same needle. Hmm. So if somebody has hepatitis or some other, you know, bloodborne disease, it's probably going to spread it through everybody. So that's the problem that we have. Stuff with. I might just like to show the guys with exactly what goes on. If I take this out to uh, a lot of different groups and stuff, like this guy here is a, a set of false teeth. People always say, what happened to false teeth? False teeth? Well, hmm. one of the guys tried to come in and he had a handcuff key in the bottom of his teeth. Now he had that in uh, bubble gum, but we put it in sil silicone so you can kind of see what it is. But he actually had a handcuff key attached to his to the bottom of his false teeth, or actually the roof of his mouth. You know, I've cut 19-year-old kids down from suicide attempts. They didn't complete them, thank God. Uh, I've done CPR on people that didn't make it. Uh, for guys, older guys died in here. You know, that's these are things. I had a 33-year-old man die on me from a drug overdose uh, one day on a shift. Uh, I had a girl slice her throat one time with a razor blade. We saved her. Um, but uh, you know, that was kind of scary. I mean, it was more blood than I ever saw in my whole life anywhere uh, there on the floor. But you know, the officers, I mean, they were unbelievable. They jumped in. She didn't want to go down. She didn't want to get restrained. We had to fight her to the ground. And then we had to you know, kind of put the pressure on her neck to keep the blood from coming out. We had medevaced her out, um, and she lived. We were you know, very happily. I was, I was happy she lived. I don't think she was happy she lived, but I was kind of happy she lived. Without any of that stuff. I've had inmates come over and shake my hand. Uh, I had one of the kids I, uh, I cut down years ago down Area Street Jail. I ran into him one time at a restaurant. He came over and gave me a hug. He said, thank you for saving my life. You know, those things happen. So what are you going to do? Jail, here's as I've been here. We probably, in Montgomery County, probably sent 12 or 14 guys to death row from Montgomery County. That's not a ton, but it's, it's enough. And you don't forget those guys. Some of the stuff they do with this, you know, is really, really heinous. Kind of hard to get on death row in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and uh, but it's you know the stuff they do is usually is pretty graphic and kind of hard to see past that when you see these guys. I don't like to you know take a guy out and say oh this is what he did or whatever, but with them guys it's come sometimes it's kind of hard to forget. You know somebody kills a kid or you know that kind of stuff it's kind of hard to forget. We just had Harold Murray. He just left here. He's on death row right now. He got sentenced to two death sentences for killing an Upper Murrayan. One of our guys was actually. Executed uh, Leon Moser, he killed his family over here on uh, Germantown Pike on Palm Sunday. He walked over to his wife and two kids and two daughters and shot him uh, with a high, high power rifle. And uh, he's one of the few guys we actually put to death in Pennsylvania last in the last 10 or 15 years. I guess I'd be lying if I said no. Um, I don't think anybody, I'm, I'm afraid of anybody. I'm afraid of a situation sometimes. I'm afraid for my people that I work with. You know, being in charge sometimes, that's hard for that kind of thing. You have to send people to do something, you know, and you, if somebody gets hurt, you kind of take responsibility for that. So that would be what makes me more afraid than anything, that somebody would get hurt else. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll get people off the street. They come in here, you know, half an hour after they assault the police officer. They come and see me in uniform, but who do they think I am? They think I'm just another cop, and, they, you know, they want to act up. And so, yeah, that's a hard part, too, is that admissions intake and the, the medical, mental health unit. So there are some problem areas, but yeah, am I, am I ever afraid? Yeah, I've been afraid, uh, but I have to overcome that. I can't let my guys see that. I can't let the inmate know that either. So, good to be back in the jail because the jail has like a life of its own. You feel it. You can feel what's going on in the jail, or, or, or if there's nothing going on in the jail, there's a problem. But usually, you can have like, the jail has like a pulse almost, and you can pick up on it right away. So. Yeah, yeah. Again, you know, this is a county jail. I mean, I'll get people off. Is it comfortable? No, it's deflated. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you got money? <laughs> yes. You got bail money? I think it.